I can power the car with sunshine. Exactly. Which, there's just something so wonderful yeah. about that. Yeah. And it's free. Yes. It's finally time to get rid of what we call the gas guzzler. But that was the past, this is the future, and I am going electric. Oh hi, welcome to my new hallway where I am collecting, yet again, more letters from energy suppliers. I swear, since we have moved house, we have had more paperwork through that letterbox than I have ever known. Um, the energy suppliers for the previous owner, they keep sending us paperwork, telling us why they're brilliant and why we should stick with them. Our old suppliers from our old house are like, hey guys, stick with us, you know. It's like we've broken up with a lot of people and they won't leave us alone. Here's the thing, I am actually looking to sign up with a new energy supplier. But since we've got the electric car, I am a lot more conscious about who that might be. Because if we've gone greener with the car, I don't then want to be filling it with electricity that might be supporting a supplier that aren't supporting renewables. You know, if we're gonna go green with a car, you know, let's really think about where that energy comes from. But there are lots of options. I've been online and it's a little bit confusing as to who is going to give us a good rate, but also give us, you know, also allow us to genuinely 100% support renewable energy. So the lovely Nina from Witch is um, coming over to help me make sense of everything. I'm here with Nina from Witch because, well, I'm in need of some advice. Um, as you know, I've just moved to a new place. I've got an electric car and I'm searching for some kind of energy tariff that meets my current needs. But the important thing is that I want the energy source to be as clean and renewable as possible. Um, but I've had a look and there are so many options and honestly, it's a bit of a minefield. So I just wanted you know, to hear from you, how do I go about starting this? Well, I mean, you're absolutely right. The great news is that there is a lot of choice out there for mm. you. Three years ago, there were just under 10% of energy deals out there that were offering you renewable electricity tariffs. Right. Today, over half of the deals on the market are saying that they've got renewable um, electric offers for you. Okay. So what we'd say is, you know, this is great, mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right. It can be a bit of a minefield to figure out what is actually really green yeah. and what is purporting to be green. Yeah, because some are offering 100% renewable and others are, are offering different percentages. So if I wanted to go for someone that is claiming to have 100% renewable energy, mm -hmm. like what are my options now? Well, you're right, 40 suppliers out there are saying that they are offering you 100% renewable electricity tariffs. Um, but even those can vary. Right. So we know that at the top end of the scale, there's mm. some great suppliers out there that are actually offering you 100%. They are spending the money in terms of either buying directly from a generator who has got a solar farm or a wind farm to source that electricity and put it into the grid. Okay. Or they're doing it themselves. They're setting up their farms and saying, right, we're going to invest in renewable electricity mm -hmm. and that's what's going to be matching exactly the usage of their customers that they're selling to. On the other end of the scale, you've got providers who are saying that, yes, we've got 100% renewable energy tariffs. Mm. But what they're instead doing is buying certificates that will prove that the amount of usage of their customer's energy is being matched by the amount of renewable energy that is actually in the system, but they're not providing it themselves. So we think this is a bit of greenwashing because it's actually not supporting renewable energy production. Just a quick one on what greenwashing actually is, if you don't know. Uh, it's a type of marketing spin where a company or organisation might give a false impression or leave misleading information to suggest that their product or what they do is environmentally friendly, that it is eco and therefore somehow better. You know, those who are really environmentally conscious and want to think that they're supporting clean, green energy yeah. in the UK, those sorts of tariffs don't really do that. You're really looking for those who are either directly buying from the generators mm -hmm. or providing it themselves. Right, so if I'm looking for a supplier who is offering 100% renewable, clean renewable energy, then I really need to, to find out where they are getting it from. Absolutely, it's, okay. it's going to take you a bit of research. Is it more expensive to go with one of these suppliers? I mean, when we've looked at the tariffs out there, those who are have the strongest 
green credentials, mm -hmm. their, their tariffs tend to be a bit higher. Mm -hmm. But what's really been understood and what the regulator has also found is that that's because they're directly supporting green energy in the UK. And that comes at a higher cost. It's working with those generators, those farmers who are um, putting up the turbines and the solar farms out there. And that's just at a higher cost. Right. However, mm -hmm. you do still have some middle players in the market that um, will be buying some directly from these producers, but then also getting some of their energy elsewhere, and that can help lower the cost of the tariff. So even though it may not be the greenest, it's still quite green and still good. And you know, those who are environmentally conscious can still be doing their bit by going with these suppliers too. A lot of people have mentioned economy seven tariffs and night nighttime tariffs when you're going to get a good rate in the evening, which is likely when you're charging your car. I want to get some of that action, but they don't exist anymore. Um, so is there anything out there that will bring me peace of mind that I could go on to right now? So we know that there are um, tariffs out there called time of use tariffs. Okay. And so that does give you a day rate and a night rate. There's a few of those deals out there, but mm -hmm. we anticipate a lot more coming onto the market okay. in the future as energy suppliers are recognising that they're going to be customers like you who are having electric vehicles <laughs> parked outside and want to be charging and making the most of lower prices. Okay, all right. So really it's just up to the family or the individual to work out what's important and what's appropriate for them right now. All right, I've got some thinking to do. So I'm looking for a 100% renewable time of use tariff. Okay, <laughs> thank you so much for just clearing all of that up for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Since that conversation, I have finally decided on an energy supplier and I've actually gone with a company who are pretty much as green as you can get. Um, they're going to provide us with a smart meter so we can track our energy usage, but also eventually we will be eligible for some slightly cheaper nighttime rates, which is going to be really useful for charging the car. But something that strikes me is that if you want to power your own electricals with 100% renewable energy, the only way to do it is just cut out the grid and actually make your own energy at home. Um, and that brings us to the likes of well, wind turbines, but mainly solar panels and then battery storage. So this feels a little bit intimidating. We've got the car, we've got the charge point, we've got the smart meter on the way. It's an awful lot of technology to invest in, but also to get your head around. And I feel like solar panels is probably, I'm thinking a little bit too far into the future, uh, but I am interested in it. So I'm going to have a conversation with David Lewis at Electric Car Home to find out what our options are. I'm in my garden with David from Electric Car Home, who is here to talk all things solar panels. Now, David, as someone who now has an electric car, I've invested mm -hmm. in a charge point. I feel like my car has been a bit of a gateway into an electric home. And now it feels like the next step in upgrading my house would be to put mm -hmm. some solar panels on the roof. Yep. Would you agree with that? Yes, I would, of course. Yes, why? So, well, um, solar panels allow you to produce your, your own electricity. Mm. So normally you, you receive your electricity from the national grid. Yeah. And with solar panels, you have a second supply of electricity coming from your roof. And um, it allows you to charge your electric car with purely green electricity. I can power the car with sunshine. Exactly. Which, there's yeah. just something so wonderful yeah. about that. Yeah. And it's free. Yes. The sun, the government hasn't found a way of taxing the sun yet. Yes, yes, I love that. Um, but I guess it's one thing, um, putting myself on a tariff that ensures the flow of energy into my home is as clean as possible. However, you can't get better than generating your own on your roof. Yes, yeah, so with an electric car, because mm -hmm. there's a big battery, mm -hmm. you'll probably be doing a bit of both. Yes. You'll be charging it partly with solar electricity mm -hmm. and partly from off-peak electricity um, at night time. Okay. Uh, looking at my roof now, uh, yeah. it, it, does this roof look like it would be good for solar panels? Yes, this would be <laughs> fine for solar panels. Um, you can probably fit about five panels on. Okay. And uh, panels are rated nowadays around 300 watts. So you'd be able to get about 1.5 kilowatts of power right. on this east-facing roof. But of course, uh, it's a roof, so I've got the other side as well. So can I use this bit? Yes, you can. So your west roof is the same shape. Yes. Uh, <laughs> inverse. <laughs> uh, so you'll have, to have another five panels, another 1.5 kilowatts of power. So your combined system size would be three kilowatts. 
if kilowatts are new to our audience, yes. what, what does that mean? Can you help me visualise yeah. that all? So um, a, a kilowatt is a flow of power. Mm -hmm. So if you think of a kettle, yes. kettle is about two and a half kilowatts. Right. So if your solar panel system were producing 2.5 kilowatts of power, yes. and the sun stayed out for three or four minutes, <laughs> yes. it would boil your water right. uh, purely with, with the sunshine. Okay, so really, it's all, so you've got to what you're powering depends on the flow of energy that you're getting into the house at the time. That's right, and solar won't always be producing its peak power. Okay. So in the morning when the sun's just coming up, you might only have half a kilowatt or one kilowatt. And then as the sun comes up, and particularly in summer when the sun is higher in the sky, mm -hmm. your solar panel will, system will be producing more power. We say it's free. Obviously, the energy from the sun is free however installing and the cost of a solar panel yep. isn't yes what are we talking about in terms of cost on something like a system that would work on my roof yeah so the system on your roof would probably cost in the region of four and a half five thousand pounds okay what well, does that include everything yeah includes the supply and the installation of the system and mm -hmm. and vat okay. and the payback period on on a solar panel system is typically about 10 years so how are you how are you calculating that yeah so it's um mainly um your electricity bill will go down so yeah. <laughs> as you as you use the solar electricity you're not bringing in solar electricity from the grid mm -hmm. so at the end of your year your electricity bill is lower and also from the 1st of january 2020 the government pays um, the smart export guarantee which is an income based on how much electricity you don't use and is exported to the grid. Ah. So you need to sign up with a participating electricity supplier. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll put in a smart meter okay. and they'll be able to measure how much you're exporting and they'll pay you probably around five and a half pence per kilowatt hour. Okay, so you're turning your own home into a little mini power station. Exactly. To help feed back to the grid. Exactly. And you're getting pennies for that. Yes, you are. All right, so 10 years, that's still, that is still quite a long time. And for me and Greg, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm almost certain this isn't going to be our forever home. So whilst ideally, um, I would love to have solar panels, um, not only because I just love the idea of powering a home with sunshine, but also it's just better for the planet. Yes. So in my heart, I'd like to do it. But I guess my sensible head goes, you know what, you're just not going to recoup those mm. costs. Yes. Would that be a fair argument? Or? Yes, it would. Um, what I would say is that um, when the house is sold, mm. um, the people who buy the house will, of course, benefit from what you put in. Mm -hmm. So you may well find that this house is easier to sell than your neighbour's house, which doesn't have solar panels installed. That's true, actually. So it's a, it's a cheaper house to run. Yeah. And also solar panels have a very long life. So these are very resilient products. Um, NASA sends them into space to power... <laughs> probes and rovers on Mars. <laughs> so they actually last 25, 30, 35 years. At the moment, we're talking about a system whereby you have solar panels that are generating electricity that are flowing straight into the house or straight into the car, the yes. battery. Uh, the problem being that it could be a nice sunny day, I might not be here charging the car, exactly. and that electricity is just going to waste. Yes. So that's where battery storage comes in. That's right. So very often people who have an electric car will use it to commute to work. Mm -hmm. And when they're producing solar electricity, the car is basically in the wrong place. Right, because it's yeah. a sunny, day, it's sunny day, the car is in the car park at work. Exactly. Got so it. what you can do is install battery storage. And battery storage allows you to soak up this excess solar. So your house will need some electricity during the day, mm. but a lot of it will be superfluous. And that can go straight into your battery. And then when you come home in the evening and plug your car into your charging point, yeah. it will draw this stored solar electricity out of the battery into your car. So it's mm. green driving, yeah. but not electricity put in when the electricity has been produced. Oh, so I, I completely see the appeal and I can understand why someone who gets an electric vehicle suddenly, well, there's a knock on effect and suddenly yes. want to start investing because there's actually something um, quite powerful about, about being in control of your own energy usage. Yes. I think that's a change that's happening and I think it's... Well, yeah, well, exactly. So basically when you have an electric car, mm. your home becomes an electric car home. Yes. In the old days, your, your diesel petrol car was on the drive and it wasn't mm. connected to your house. Right. And now with a, a cable, to, connected to your charging point, it's like a, an umbilical cord. Yeah. So you have your, your baby car, electric car, yeah. connected to the mother home, yes. and there, there is a, an intimate connection. Right. And this is now how people's lives will, will change. Mm. 
um, and you will interact with your car. Yeah. And at the moment, everything is from the home to the car. Yeah. But in the future, your car will also provide electricity to your home mm. and to the grid. <gasps> so this is something to look forward to. It's addictive. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Okay. Thank welcome. you. It's a pleasure. That was a really useful conversation, but to be honest, I think the likelihood of us getting solar panels is going to come down to how long we envision staying in this property, um, just so we can decide whether the investment is worth it. Um, we would love to be people who do have solar panels, but with the all but with all the other technology that's just come into our life right now, it's just a bit too much of an investment. But if we could do it, then we definitely would, uh, because I think for us. It's not always a question of cost, it's also just a question of what's right for the planet and what we believe in. So it is definitely something that we will look look to spending our money on in the future. Uh, I hope you found this useful and helpful if you're thinking about getting solar panels or if being at all confused about tariffs in your own life. And as always, if you have been, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, here we go. First time with the rapid charger. This is how it went in slow motion. What? Come oh on. no! We're ready to go. Nearly. So we're going to be doing this for the first time in the rain. How British. Take a look at the events page on our website to find out about fully charged live events happening near you www.fullycharged.show Exterior, my garden, interview with David from Electric Car, home take one. Ow, it's cold. <laughs>